my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when we sing, surely love and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. This is not a saying that comes from our hearts. This is not just a declaration. This is the promise of God found in His Word. He says, surely love and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. In the name of Jesus, He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So we have His promise that surely His love and His mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. good God you are a good father we come to pray before you we come to seek your face to worship you to celebrate every beautiful thing you have done in our lives God we ask you to speak to us in this moment father send your Holy Spirit to use me to speak from you so that my preaching and my speaking today will be of an encouragement, of teaching, of instruction. Father, the hearts of your children will be stirred up to do what's right. Lord, we thank you and we love you and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can have your seats. Amen. Today, I want to start here on a subject of prayer. And I want to start by saying, ask God for anything. Ask God for anything. Have you asked God yet? Have you asked God yet? Ask God for anything. Ask God for anything. Ask God for anything. And let me tell you, our God is amazing. Our God will do anything. He's a powerful God. I've seen God do amazing things when we ask. When we come to God in prayer. We easily forget that actually, if we asked, it would accelerate our lives a little bit faster than when we try to do things in our own strength. Um, I, uh, we, we have a generation, a generation that is more motivated than prayed. Like they are really motivated. We know we, we have all these motivation speakers. And they really come and puff you up and motivate you. We have all this, this, all this leadership teaching and vision and visioneering and, and dreaming. And they get you puffed up. And then some people think with all that puff, they're going to do amazing things. And unfortunately, as a result, we have a generation that's more motivated and prayed. They've not prayed 
enough. They have not sought God for the next steps of their lives. They have not sought prayer in their future. We are the generation that has been told to more to organize and strategize than to organize. And I'm not saying it's bad to strategize. I'm not saying it's bad to organize. I believe in organization. Otherwise, we would have chaos here. I believe in strategizing. I, I can actually strategize. I'm a planner. I can enter in a room and build something that didn't exist. And you actually give it wheels and move out. Give me a few months. It will actually be moving. I don't have a problem with that. But let me tell you. Organization and strategizing without the help of God doesn't actually help, can be empty. So uh, I want to inspire a generation of organizers, people who strategize, but also people who know how to agonize in the presence of God. And they can seek him, the face of God and trust God for great things. Men and women who know how to pray. We are the generation of hustlers and a generation of peaceful, hardworking men and women full of faith in God's provision. I want to say life is not a hustle. You make a choice to make life a hustle. I choose to be a peaceful, hardworking man full of faith in God's provision. In other words, I want to be hardworking I don't want to be lazy, but I want my labor to be blessed by God. I want my labor to be multiplied by God. I want to see the blessing of God go ahead of me. So that I step into opportunity. Okay, I step into opportunity. I want to be a person of faith who is actually trusting in God's provision. That, yes, I'm working hard, but I know one thing. God is providing for my needs. In fact, I prefer that the blessing of God gives me so much work that I don't have where to put the work. But the work is as a result of God's blessing. You know that God can give you so much of blessing that you have so much work because of the blessing of God. You know, in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? What causes fights and quarrels among you? In other words, why are you, why have you become a generation that fights? A generation that quarrels. A generation that will lie about your co-worker or your friend because you want to take their position. A generation that will write a wrong report about your co-worker, your friend or your neighbor because you want to take what they have. A generation of fighters. A generation of wrong hustlers and quarreling everywhere and fighting and, and no peace and no favor and no grace and no joy but a, a tired generation. So don't they come from your desires that battle within you? In other words, don't these battles come from your selfishness? Don't these battles come from being filled of self? Instead of being filled of God's kingdom, don't actually these battles come from seeking your will instead of seeking the will of God in your life. You realize that if you start seeking the will of God, no one can ever battle you and win you. No one, no one, no one can ever battle you and win you. If you start seeking the face of God, no mountain can stand before you. You're going to push it away. When you stand in the will of God, let me tell you, men and women who pray can do anything. Anything God can do, they can do. You 
You, des you desire, but you, do you, you don't have, so you kill. You covet, but you don't get what you want. Is that not the generation? They want. They want nice cars. They want nice homes. They want. By the way, I have, we are actually becoming a materialistic generation. People want things. Covert, but they don't get what they want. So they quarrel and fight, don't they? They quarrel and fight. You do not have because you don't ask. What a simple statement. Really simple. You don't have because you don't ask. You don't have because you don't ask. When I make that statement, you don't have because you don't ask. The whole idea of asking God brings so much joy in my heart. You don't have because you don't ask. The reason these destructive desires exist among Christians is because we don't seek God for our needs. We don't ask. James reminds us here of the great power of prayer. And only one may live and necessarily spiritually and poor and physically poor simply because they don't pray. They don't ask. We have less people praying, less people asking. If I declared a prayer meeting here tomorrow, less than a hundred people will appear. Because why? Somehow people don't want to pray. They don't want to ask. But they move around with the needs in their hearts. And because their needs are not met, as a result, they are fighting, they are quarreling, they are struggling in their lives. If we possess, in other words, we might state it as a vital spiritual law. And this is the spiritual law that God does not give unless we ask. God does not give unless we ask. It's as simple as that. God does not give unless we ask. And let me tell you, even in our daily life, there is a lot of power in asking. Most of the times we receive because we ask. If we possess little of God and his kingdom, almost suddenly we have asked little. Ask you for little, you get little. Ask for more, you get more. For me, I love to ask you for more. I love to ask you for a lot. People we work with will tell you, we go to meetings, and then someone will say, 300. And I'll say, no, 300 is not enough. We need 700. We ask for more. We ask for more. And someone will say, no. We say, maybe we need a budget of 100,000. I say, no, let's make it 150. I always want to ask for more because I believe in a God of more than enough. And every time we ask God for more, God will respond, especially if our attitude is in line with the will of God. You know, I want to remind you a text in Scripture where actually God told Jesus to ask. Can you imagine? God told Jesus to ask. Uh, God says to his own, his own son, his own son to ask. Ask of me and I'll give you the heaven for thine inheritance and the, and, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy own possession. God told Jesus, ask me for nations. Jesus asked for nations. We are actually a result of Jesus' prayer, asking God the Father for the nations. We belong to Jesus because Jesus prayed. And he said, I want the nations. 
Now, if the royal and divine son of God cannot be exempted from the rule of asking that he may have, you and I cannot, ex cannot be exempted or the rule cannot be relaxed in our favor. We all have to pray and ask. So if you have anything by asking and nothing, and nothing without asking, I beg you to see how absolutely prayer is vital in your life. You need to beseech God and abound in prayer, abound in prayer, abound in prayer, abound in asking and praying other things in your life. One revivalist by the name of Spurgeon. Spurgeon was an English preacher, powerful English preacher in London. In fact, when you go to the the city of London, you'll find the Metropolitan Church still exists in London. It's a big, it's a big church in the city of London built by Spurgeon. Uh, Spurgeon said, all heaven lies before the grasp of the asking man. All heaven lies before the grasp of the asking man. All the promises of God are rich and inexhaustible and their fulfillment is to be is to be hardy by prayer. In other words, you get them by prayer, by asking. So, stop fighting. Stop quarreling. Stop being envious. Stop feeling bad about those who become successful. And start praying. Start praying. And unfortunately, we pray amiss. That's what him, uh, uh, James is saying. We pray amiss. We pray amiss. And our prayers don't get answered. That you may spend it on your own pleasures. In other words, prayer is about your own pleasure. It's about greed. It's, it's about having things. Now, there is a difference between asking God to provide for you and greed. Like, uh, you see what another person has and you want it for yourself. I had a friend of mine, every time I would buy a shirt, he would also go buy the same shirt. Man, I looked at him and said, you are really struggling. I have bad news for you. He's still struggling up to this day. Still struggling up to this day. Because he was just greedy, coveting what others have instead of genuinely uh, trusting God for what God is doing in his life. After dealing with the problem of no prayer, now James addresses the problem of selfish prayer. Selfish prayer. And he says, selfish prayers never get answered by God. And you become angry because your prayers have not been answered. These ones, when they did ask, they asked God with purely selfish motives. We must remember that the purpose of God is not to persuade a recurrent God <laughs> to do us binding, to provide for us, to do. In other words, when we come to God, we don't, have, we don't come to a recurrent God, like a God who is kind of... Not ready to answer us. It's like we are pushing the hand of God and squeezing the hand of God. It's not like God has your wife in his own hands and you have to pray so much that you open up his hands to give you. That God has so much of your money and that you have to break his finger through prayer so you can get what he you want. And I realize that much of our prayer actually is like that. And sometimes I see some people who are so tired praying. They're so tired praying because they are praying like they are battling with God. Man, I'm not battling with God. I battle with the devil. God is a good God. God is my father. When I come to him in prayer, he answers my prayers. 
God answers my prayers even in my sleep. He answers my prayers. He is a good, is a good God. He's a God who has good wishes for me. He's only saying, can you come near me and pray and seek my face? In other words, the purpose of prayer. This is the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer is not to get material things. The purpose of prayer is to align our will with his will and in partnership with him to ask him to accomplish his will on earth. That is the purpose of prayer. Let me repeat it. The purpose of prayer is not to align our will. I mean, it's, the purpose of prayer is to align our will with his will. And in partnership with him to ask him to accomplish his will here on earth. So I'm asking God for, for an education. I'm asking God for an education, yes. But I'm not asking God for every education. I'm asking God for an education in relationship to the will of God for me. For what he wants me to do for him. Because the education I am getting and the degrees I'm getting and I'm asking God for, there is a greater purpose behind the degree and the greater purpose is the kingdom of God. I'm asking God for influence so that God may give it to me like God gave it to Jabez. And God remembered him and expanded his territory and kept him, kept him away from sickness. Because behind my prayer, there is a will of God. There is a will of God. There is a will of God. There is a greater purpose. There is a greater good. A greater good beyond my personal good. Now, let me make this statement. God doesn't want us to make him a spare tire. You know a spare tire? And for many people, I'm sorry, God is a spare tire. So they have life. Their life has four tires. And it's their life. They drive their lives with four what? Tires. And then once in a while they get a crisis. And one tire breaks down. And then they pull out the spare tire and put it on so they can get where they want to go. Many people pray when they have a crisis. When they have a problem, let them get a problem, you will see them praying day and night. Let them get a problem, you will see them fasting. Let them get a problem, they will become God's children. They become faithful. God is a spare tire. God doesn't want you to make him a spare Tire. The reason why God doesn't answer some prayers is because we want to use God instead of allowing God to use us. Okay, in other words, we make God our servant. God, I need some bread today. And then God brings bread. God, I need new shoes today. God brings new shoes. Oh, God, my car is getting old. God, I need a new car. God brings a new car. God is not your servant. God is your master. God is not a spare tire. So, you, you look at the motivation. And this is what he, uh, James is dealing with. James is dealing with the internal things inside him. The prayer warriors inside the, those who are calling upon the name of God. And he's saying, your failure is about the state of your heart. Your failure is about the state of your affections. Your failure is about your greed and envy and what you are fighting for instead of fighting for my kingdom. You know, God doesn't want to be occasionally used Occasionally used for selfish needs. Occasionally, I go to church on Christmas. Occasionally, I go to church on Easter. Occasionally, God is occasionally used. God doesn't want to be occasionally used. Don't stop using God. Some of you don't want people to use you. How about God? Stop using me. Have you ever felt that someone is using you? And he speaks sweet, nice words. But he's actually using you. <laughs> we 
do the same thing in prayer. We speak some nice things and sometimes in tongues. And we're actually using God. And as soon as you get what you want, they will never see you. Prayer does not make God your servant who brings whatever you desire on the table. God wants more for you. His kingdom to manifest in your life. We've been talking about Romans chapter 14 verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Look at it. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating. It's not about things. No, it's more than that. It's righteousness. Show me someone who is weak in prayer. I'll show you someone who is not living a righteous life. Show me someone whose prayer life has gone down. I'll show you someone who is actually beginning to backslide. You know, I used to say, and I've said this again and again, lukewarmness is, good, is a good environment for breeding bacteria. Lukewarmness is a good environment for breeding bacteria, for growing bacteria. When we become prayerless Christians, but still come to church on Sunday and still talk about God, and maybe go to a Bible study occasionally, we become lukewarm Christians. And those lukewarm Christians become a breeding ground for compromise. So God wants you to be on fire. God wants you to be pleasing. God wants you to be walking in righteousness and peace and joy. I'll make a few points here before we finish. Number one, the person who can pray can do anything. For God can do anything. For prayer can do anything that God can do. And God can do anything. Let me repeat myself. The person who can pray can do anything. For prayer can do anything that God can do. And God can do anything. God can do anything. Our God is an amazing God. Therefore, number two, our desperate need in these days is to link our lives with the omnipotent. Is to link our lives with the most powerful God. Omnipotent, all powerful. God has all the power. There used to be a preacher, his name was Reinhard Bonke. Reinhard Bonke was mightily used by God on this continent of Africa. And he would go to Reinhard Bonke's crusades. One time in Nigeria, he spoke to a million people. And Reinhard Bonke was interesting. He would actually repeat his sermons. And you'd hear what he preached in Nigeria. He would preach in Uganda. It's like, you know, evangelists can only have like 10 sermons. And they recycle them everywhere. And this guy one day preached. And he said, you know, uh, there was an elephant and this elephant was powerful. He had a lot of energy. And then when this elephant was walking, a small insect, in English we call it, in Kinyarwanda we call it Agashish Gatoya. In Luganda they call it Munyera. It attached itself on the elephant. And as the elephant was walking across the bridge, the bridge started shaking and falling apart. And then at the end of the, the bridge, after crossing the bridge, not the elephant, but the insect made noise and said, we've shaken the bridge, we've shaken the bridge, we've shaken the bridge, we've shaken the bridge. Why? Because that small insect attached itself to a powerful animal. Friends, let me tell you, we have a powerful God. And when we link our prayers in the power of the omnipotent God, we can see the power of God work for us in our lives to do miracles, to do amazing things, to move mountains, to take 
take us places. We'll never take ourselves to open up nations. We'll never open up for ourselves to place us in places of honor and greatness and power and influence and leadership because we've looked into the most powerful God. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, O oh, sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched hand. Um, nothing is too hard for you. God can answer any prayer. Nothing is too hard for our God. In other words, nothing is impossible with our God. Whatever I said he will do in your life. Wait a little bit. Stay on your knees. Stay trusting him and praying. Don't use him as a spare tire. Trust him as your only tire. And God will take you across the bridge. Number three. God who has told us to pray promises actually to answer. He promises to answer. In the book of John chapter 14, verse 24, the Bible says, Till now, you've not asked for anything. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Now, many of us stop at asking and receiving. It's more than asking and receiving. It's about the joy of the Lord being complete in your life. That's why I've been talking about joy. We are so selfish and stuck on asking and receiving. And we don't consider the joy of the Lord. And as a result, we are asking for more before we rejoice. And remember, joy is the kingdom of God. In other words, when we pray, whatever we pray should bring the kingdom of God should bring the kingdom of God. My marriage should bring the kingdom of God. My degree should bring the kingdom of God. My house should bring the kingdom of God. My possession should bring the kingdom of God. My influence should bring the kingdom of God. Everything about all the answered prayers in my life are more than me. They're about the kingdom of God. That's a higher way to pray. James 2, 4 says, you desire but you don't have. You kill, but so you kill. You kill in your thoughts. I wish, I wish he can die and I can have his position. You've already killed the person. I wish he can die. Let me tell you, these things do happen. I wish he can get sick and die and then I can step in. I'm here. Okay? <laughs> you covert but you can't get what you want. So you quarrel and do what? And fight. It's your fighting. You're quarreling. Who forgot you? Maybe God forgot you. Because when God forgets you, let me tell you, even the people will never remember you. When God forgets you, <laughs> even your own blood brother will forget you. Have you seen that? God forgets you, and even someone you were born with from the same mother and father forgets you. And then your brother drives and passes by, and he doesn't even remember that you're on the roadside. I mean, when God forgets you, everything forgets you. Even gods forget you. Even dogs forget you. Everything forgets you. <laughs> Number four, failures in our lives are prayer failures. Failures in our lives are prayer failures. Failures in our lives are prayer failures. There is no genuine need in our lives. Fervent believing prayer cannot meet. Fervent believing prayer will meet every need. And the last one, number six, don't pray. We don't pray to just get God's blessing. We don't pray to just get God's blessing. It's more than getting God's blessing. Not praying is committing sin. We don't pray to only get God's blessing. Not praying is committing sin. Now, I want to be careful 
we will go to heaven not because of our prayers, but because we put our faith in Jesus Christ. And our lives have been washed by the blood of Jesus who died for us on the cross. I strongly believe there are some people who get in heaven and they'll be shocked. Hey, I also got here. I also got here. You man, you don't know what God did for me. I did I know that I'll get here. They're like, it's like an accident. But listen to what Samuel said. Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. And he said, as for me, it's over there, as for me, be it far from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. And I'll teach you the way that is good and right. That was, I'll keep doing what is right. And I will not fail to pray for you. I will not stop praying. In other words, Samuel is saying, prayer is my habit. Prayer is my lifestyle. Whatever I do, I do it in prayer. I will not stop praying. I'll pray at 19. I'll pray at 20. I'll pray at 30. I'll pray at 70. I pray at, I'll pray at 80. I'll pray at 90. I'll pray till I go to heaven. I pray when I'm successful. I'll pray when I'm powerful. I will pray when my fridge is full. I pray, I'll pray when I have a new car. I will pray when I have multiple homes. I will pray. Because the prayer is not just about asking for the material. Prayer is about establishing the kingdom of God here on earth for everything I do. Let's stand up on our feet and be men and women of prayer, trusting God. I want to see this place full of renewed prayer warriors. People spending a night in the church praying. We have a night of prayer on Friday. People who come in at 80 and 70 and pray before the music starts. They are seeking the face of God. People who pack their cars uh, Thursday evening with no church service and they enter in these four walls of the building and spend an hour or two in the presence of God. Now, some of you claim I'm very busy. So busy, I won't pray. You know, Martin Luther said, I'm too busy, therefore, I'll pray three hours a day. Too busy, I'll pray three hours a day. And listen to Daniel. Daniel was a governor. Daniel was number three in the kingdom. And Daniel prayed three times a day as a habit. Now, some of you claim to be busy and you're running a business of $100,000 and you think you are too busy. There are people who are running businesses of 12 or $13 million and they are still praying. Some of you claim to be busy. Some people have 400 people work under them and they are still praying. You think you are busy. May I tell you, Business is more in your head than reality. Because any business, any pursuit that takes you away from the presence of God, I want to tell you, is taking you to a major fall in your life. Because everything we have received by the favor and the grace of God, we keep it by pursuing the favor and the grace of God. Whatever we achieved through prayer, we are going to keep it in prayer. Going to keep it in prayer. Therefore, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Not even wealth, not even positioning, not even business, not even trouble, not even trouble will ever separate us from God. We will seek His face. And therefore, we'll do more and more and more, and better, and greater in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a big hand clap. Yes. Let's give God a big hand clap. Let's stretch our hands to God in prayer. Let's stretch our hands 
to God in prayer. For someone here, maybe you need to ask God to ignite a new prayer fire in your life. New fire. Maybe someone here, you need to ask God to give you a fresh anointing. Fresh anointing for prayer. There is an anointing for prayer. There is a grace for supplication and prayer and pursuing God. Maybe you've never, whatever I am preaching about today is kind of a story. You've never experienced it in your life to become a man and a woman in of fervent prayer. Can you ask God to lead you there? To take you there. To give you a new chapter. To give you a new blessing. To give you a new joy. To carry you in a new dimension in your life of spirituality and victory. God to take you in that place where we win. And we win all the time. God we come before you. We ask you for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit upon this congregation. God, I pray that our hearts and lives will be stirred up by your Holy Spirit to make us a church that prays, a church that seeks your face all the time, a church that is doing exploits in this nation and in the nations of the world because you are with us and you are leading us to establish your kingdom in big ways. In the name of Jesus.